Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zero, and welcome back to another Babblers video. In this video we're going to be going over the top 5 changes made by Warmain in 2016. And at number 5, character trading. On April 25th, 2016, the announcement came from Warmain that they would be providing a character trading service. While Retail WoW has long considered character trading and selling a violation of terms of service, Warmain decided to make it an official part of the game. Basically, players who have donated are able to buy and sell in-game characters for coins in Warmain's shop. Warmain wanted to provide a safe way for their players to exchange characters since it was a highly requested feature. There is a 15% commission on all sales and a minimum amount you can sell for that changes based on how geared and wealthy your character is. Initial criticism came in early concerning the minimum posting prices being too high, with many pointing out the ability to create a tune and gear it to the same level using far fewer coins than the mandatory asking price. However, it is important to note that because achievements are not purchasable, the character trading may in fact be worth more than just buying best in slot gear pieces for a fresh 80. I currently have no idea how well that market system is doing, although it is still an active feature. And at number 4, gold squishing to adjust the market. On August 25th, 2016, it was announced that a gold squish and toning down of rates on servers with artificially inflated profession skills, weapon skills, and gold income would take place on October 1st, 2016. They lowered the rates from 7 times to 3 times for gold and reputation gains, and lowered the rates from 5 times to 3 times for profession and weapon skill points. Furthermore, they announced that they would be cutting everyone's gold everywhere in half on January 1st, 2017. This news was met with overall positivity, with the biggest complaints being once again the widening of the gap between the haves and the have-nots that this change would make. The argument was that those who had already been playing for a long time would have an even bigger advantage, as the newer players would have to work harder to catch up. Unfortunately, the objection was a drawback that any change like this simply could not avoid. When asked about why the change was taking place, Super Moderator Mercy stated, The idea is to have slower skill and professions in the future, which would mean more farming and thus more materials in the economy, more supply for the demand, if you will. At number three... We have the fusing of the Deathwing and Ragnaros Wrath of the Lich King servers into a single one named Ice Crown. On May 20th, 2016, the long-awaited merge of the two Wrath servers came to a head. The plan was put into place as a result of, or perhaps in anticipation of, the new Lordaeron server that went live the previous fall. Initially, the population spike wasn't too much of a problem, but as people grew less enamored with Lordaeron, many returned to the seven times experience Ice Crown server, and the population limit was consistently reached with 10,000 players. This 10k limit was raised to 12k, and even as of this video, still hits the limit during the peak hours of the server. I have not heard of any plans to raise a limit or create another server as of yet, but as long as you make a donation, you won't have to wait in the queue to log in. Number 2. Transmogrification. Transmog changing the appearance of one item to another while keeping the original item's stats, was a feature added in retail during the Cataclysm expansion. On October 26, 2016, Warmain announced that it was implementing a transmog system for the Wrath of the Lich King expansion servers. By doing Wrath of the Lich King raids or PvP, players are able to gather the scrolls that they can use to transmog their gear. Initially, the system came with many restrictions, and since I personally have not had the chance to use the feature, I cannot say whether those restrictions have been lifted or not. Such restrictions were that you could only transmog some armor types. You could not transmog gray or white level items, and scrolls are only available for purchase with coins, not points. Basically, these scrolls have the chance to drop from raid bosses, battlegrounds, and arenas. In at number one, and perhaps the most controversial of the list, point shop modifications. In October of 2015, Warmain modified the point shop in order to allow the purchasing of ICC gear. Anyways, on October 20th, 2016, Warmain decided to remove the availability of ICC tier gear on the point shop. This led to a huge outrage among many Warmain faithful, especially those who were only a few points shy of some ICC tier gear. So Warmain extended the availability by three days, closing down the feature on October 23rd for good. Most of the outcry against the decision came from the limited notice by Warmain concerning the change, and also that it would give an unfair advantage to those who donated, essentially making the game a pay-to-win model. Warmain's response to address reasons for the change? Staff member Protarian states that the changes are, quote, to encourage playing the game and obtaining items there, and also stated that, we believe that these items have had a significant impact on the game and devalued some items. To those that said it was unfair to drastically nerf the only reward system available to non-donors, Moderator Obnoxious stated, 
Quote, you might want to get acquainted with the most rewarding reward system in the game. It's called Plane, and is fully available to non-payers. And that does it for this top five changes to the world of Warmain over the last year, or 2016. Uh, again, as I say, we're looking for those 100 subs still, so if you could just like and subscribe, I'll continue to bring you guys weekly content. Thank you again, everybody, so much for watching. As always, my name is Zeru, and this is The Babblers.